Which show? Which show would you like to have been in most? Oh, come on! Um, You've never seen Breaking I've Bad. Never seen Breaking Bad. No, oh, he's raising his eyebrow there. About the Chris Evans breakfast show. Tom, hi, uh, how you doing? This show, Tom, this show took us all by surprise. Uh, we watched it over the weekend because you were coming in. I mean, it's 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 epic, you know. It, by the way, it's brutal, it's savage. How would you sum it up, and then we'll talk about it? Oof, summing it up is quite tricky. I mean, obviously, it's a western, so it's got. Hopefully, it's got all those things that westerns have that people have fallen in love with over the years. Uh, it's it's grand. The landscape in it is is a character like westerns often demand, and therefore you get that grandeur of nature, and therefore it becomes quite heightened, quite thrilling, hopefully. But fundamentally, it's a human story. It's following Cornelia Locke, played by Emily Blunt, who arrives on the coast of America trying to revenge the, the death of her child. You don't quite know what that is about. You just know there's that pain driving her. And she falls into, into line, into path with a Pawnee warrior uh, called Eli Whip, played by Chaska Spencer. And they kind of travel across the breadth of America trying to reach this place. And we don't... F- first know what that is but fundamentally it's a story of revenge and passion and drive and humanity and existential so existence. roaming over wyoming roaming over it's wyoming do, indeed yeah and i you, could have just said that that would have been so much quicker you can have easier. it have yeah. it on me thank you and then you parachute into episode two so who are you then? so i play thomas trafford so the place that uh, the uh, uh, cornelia is trying to arrive at there's uh, a bunch of characters there and um one of them is thomas who i play who's who was actually betrothed to emily's character cornelia but has has gone to America 15 years earlier to kind of find his fortune I guess he's, there's a degree of a of a naive idealist about him there's a, there's a he's from the aristocracy but he's kind of I don't think he necessarily feels like he fits in that establishment and and, and there's there's a, a vulnerability to him but there's also this kind of I don't know yeah idealist and like dreamer in him but there's an arrogance as well and there's a conceit in him and there's, there's complexities he's a really interesting character yeah we're not play. sure in episode two if he's a goodie or a baddie no um, I don't uh, know if you know I don't even at the end Chris I don't know if you know that we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, uh, the, the first time we see him, you is playing cricket in he the, is, middle, yeah, in the yeah. middle of the wild you know, west. I was, I was devastated about this because I'm not a great cricketer, but I do like <laughs> cricket, and, 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 and I'm, I'm certainly not a great horse rider. So they had my horse double, uh, which had to come in and ride off because there's no, no chance I could do that. But they used my horse double for the cricket shot. I was like, come on, man, at least let me hit a four. Try to at least, you know. All least... oh, right, so your human horse double, my human your... horse double, it was uh, did your the cricket, cricket as well. I was devastated. <laughs> Why is that then? I don't know. I just worked out that way yeah. was it because you weren't around because of because i was of, on the side watching the, the great yeah, danger of, of being <laughs> a swain sure i think now, hugo took it? one look at me and went he can't play cricket not see tom hughes does all his own stunts and they won't even let you try and hit a four that's it can't even hit a four <laughs> <laughs> i saw more cricket in your show over the weekend than i did in the in the t- t20 <laughs> the that we won I, I, I missed it i didn't see it i was devastated I, 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 had, I had things on so i couldn't watch it but fantastic that we won again eh? that's good. so yeah so where was your wyoming was it wyoming or was it somewhere no, else? no no it was, in, it was in spain so we, oh, we yes. were an hour north of Madrid which is uh, which was wicked because Madrid I think Madrid is my favourite city I've, I've been there a few times before and every time I fall in love with it I went to San Miguel Market the first time I went there and was like hello this will do I can have a little half pint of beer and have some nice food and San Miguel have got a market I don't think it is San Miguel the, the, the beer company but there's a market not far from the main centre in Madrid I'm sure it's right. called San Miguel Market anyway it's this beautiful food market it's fantastic so the first time I went I was like I like this city and every time I've been back I kind of fall in love with it more and so it was great we filmed there we were an hour outside but when you get there like not even an hour to be fair 50 minutes it's like being on Mars the landscape was completely different completely barren nothing around well, you was, never know would you I mean, it was it, you had it down for the Wild West the whole time mm. right so Emily's character and Chasky's character um, you know uh, they sort of meet pretty much uh, within the first 50 minutes of the, of the first episode uh-huh. uh, she's, she's got a, a ton of money uh-huh. yeah she's, um, she, she, she's had a child unfortunately her child has been murdered uh-huh. I'd imagine, um, and she meets up with this. So Chasky's character is is what then? What's the culture? What's the what's the lineage of Chasky's character? Well, he's a, he was a Pawnee warrior, but he, he, what does that mean? Uh, well, he, the, the, you know, there, there were battles on at the time, weren't there? There, right. was, there was a massive land grab. You know, so he's like a mercenary then, uh, to a certain degree. But he's he's moved to the, he's kind of worked for the people who have come to the land for a right. period of time. So so there's complexities in terms of his, his his history and his connection to to the culture at the time. So therefore, that's why he's ended up being. 
quite an isolated character and that's why the two characters when they meet they are both kind of vulnerable to a certain degree they are they are very much alone in this landscape there's no one really to look out for them there's no one really to protect them or the, or their usual support networks around them aren't there or cannot be trusted so they're very much insular characters and i think that's what's really interesting about the story is you see these two people kind of unravel it together on that journey they like onions you know what little by little their layers are peeled away and, and they kind of find each other through that and find a safety through that and, and it is a it is a landscape that and is, they find something else well they? you know let's 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 yeah, watch let and see watch, but yeah but but also I, th- I think that it's if you've been hurt if you've been through a lot of pain it's very difficult to trust someone i think these two characters are in that place and actually the one thing they need is a bit of support and a bit of trust and can they find that on this journey it's got real depth to it real complexity we couldn't believe when we were all watching it how savage um, the 1890s are because it doesn't seem like they're that far away but of course you know um the world you know develops becomes more civilized or more uncivilized quicker by each decade that's ever passed absolutely did you get a handle on what it might have been like back then i i, I mean you try to don't you you try and immerse yourself in as much as you can it's a different time of course it is and it's a different way of living you know and there's there's a beautiful scene i don't think it's given much away where chaske's uh, character eli gives cornelia a compass and, and and she's setting off, like you say, for a week's ride. And you think there's such vulnerability in that. She's only been in this country for seven days. It's the first time on her own. You're going off for a week into that landscape. Anything and real about this story? I don't think so. No, no. I think it, uh, Hugo um, Hugo actually moved out to America when he was a, a young man. And I think he always wanted to to make a Western. Um, I, I, if you look at Hugo's previous work, I was desperate to work with him because he's, there's so much complexity and everything. For he's people done. who don't know who you're talking about, Hugo. Flick. Sorry, Hugo Blick, who's Sorry, the writer and the director. Uh, made shows like the the shadow line or the the honorable woman or yeah many 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 things and um, but there's always there's always the kind of the broad scope of what the what the project's going to be but there's 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 a million different ideas and complexities in it and that's exciting to make and but Hugo fundamentally I think he's been very open about this just wanted to make a western at some point and therefore this idea over time grew and this became the, the show that it was I think it's inspired by a lot of things there's definitely an homage to Leone or or, or the auteurs of westerns of years gone by but it's a, it's it's, a, it's an original story inspired by the world of it I guess Wowza um as far as the budget's concerned, is it just a BBC thing or is it a did Amazon? It Amazon oh, uh, there you go. That yeah. explains everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, there we go. Is it, this is, I think, this East, East Enders is like, you know, I think like, it can't be. So it's a co pro with Amazon. It's a co pro with Amazon, yeah. So it dropped in, uh, dropped in, uh, dropped. I thought I was trying to say the words like dropped. So it's on funny. Amazon as well. It's Amazon, Amazon, Amazon as well. So in America, it came out on Amazon Prime on Friday and then uh, episode two is here on Thursday and then every week. And know. how long are you off filming it for? Well, it was 2021, so it was kind of tricky because obviously there was you know lockdowns happening and there was the restrictions so uh, it felt quite listen I felt very fortunate to be able to travel when people weren't traveling but but it was also a nightmare I bet to schedule that so I didn't meet Emily you know so uh, so when I first went out they had to kind you of still haven't met her no I have met her now yeah right. but but they, you had to schedule it in such a way where whereas you know so I went out and kind of like the baton was passed to me for seven weeks and right. Like, right look after this and when you when it's Tom's turn Tom's turn yeah <laughs> don't let us down Tom yeah don't be the one that, that fails us you know which was a bit of pressure but it was it was fun pressure um, and also the, the lots you know when you build a studio like a western street and things like that yeah. and the bars and all that that must be I mean come on honest, I know honest, you've been in some great stuff anyway well I mean, well, well yeah it's wicked but it was literally in the middle of nowhere so, right. so sometimes you will go on to a, I'm sure you've been on film sets or, or similar Chris like where you go on and it's in a big hangar like Victoria for example was in an, air, an aircraft sound hangar sound stages yeah so you go in and you're in the middle of nowhere and like it, it doesn't feel like that and you do walk in you're, tran- you're transported this was in the middle of nowhere so the landscape was given to us so even when you get there you, you're feeling like you feel that detachment from society I guess and then when you when you turn up and they've built these things like the haystack was real like it was massive I'm on top of that thing you just you really the power of being lost in that nature does does get you does get you and a lot of Brits rocking uh, various uh, sort of Midwestern accents obviously you didn't have to do that but no. uh, you did have to adopt an accent which I one did. did you go for well I had to well he's aristocracy isn't he and uh Actually, when I signed on, we did a read through, so I spent the whole read through just listening to what what Emily was doing and trying to match my accent right. as close to that. So it, it, it was quite. He's rather well spoken, I would say. You're yeah. very good at it, Matt. I know you. I know that's what you do. Yeah. but seriously. Uh, well, cheers. Do you know what? Like, I've I've rarely played northern as I don't know why. Like so much so, someone rang my agent about four years ago. And went, can Tom do a northern accent? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's- 
snores and that. <laughs> that is so funny. Um, what's the, the response has been brilliant, hasn't it? Five star review. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, let's hope that continues. I turn up on Thursday, so let's hope that doesn't shift the dial. Well, but, uh, yeah, hang it, on, hang on. You can't get it wrong. That's the whole thing about pre written stuff. It's not like a football match, is it? You know, whoever wrote the first episode has written the, the yeah, other that's five. True. That's true. And so it does help. Um, Emily Blunt's sweeping Western is a rare, sensational masterpiece, says The Guardian. A bold, brutal Western, says The Telegraph. Empire, massively ambitious and original take on the Western genre. It's all good, man. It's all good, yeah. yeah it's, it's great, and it's nice to make a show that it feels grand of idea and you know and, and it's you you mentioned the budget you know it is a, this is there's a big scale to this and therefore you, you don't you don't want that to not land and if it is landing that's great that's really good it's brilliant it's brilliant i mean does it does it i don't because we don't know what happens right what is there a series two <laughs> is this, how does this pan out it <laughs> well, doesn't feel like there's going to be a series no, two no I don't, I don't think I don't, I've never seen Dallas but didn't they do that didn't someone come back from the dead in Dallas I, I, I think oh right okay I, I mean I, I don't I, I, like, I don't know I don't think so Chris I mean you'd have to ask Hugo to be honest and, but, uh, and Greg the exec producer but I, I think I think this is a standalone story and I, I would, my instinct is it deserves to stay like that you know alright well you can watch all episodes on the BBC iPlayer um, now which show which show would you like to have been in most. Oh, come on. Um, I, uh, I'll give you some options. No, no, I can do it. No, no I've got loads of ideas. Okay, I'm just on. trying to choose which one. Uh, there was, there was, there was many times where it was the early days on Peaky Blinders. There was a few conversations oh, about that. There was I a see. few that, and, and anyway, and it came to nothing. But that was always that always felt like the one that got away. Um, watching it and never having even been in any conversation about it, I think Succession's unbelievable. I was going to say Succession. Yeah, I think Succession is 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 Breaking top Bad. Drawer. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just this the dialogue in Succession, and I've worked with Brian Cox about oof, about not 10 the years professor, ago. the actor, the actor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and he's such he's so good to work with Brian because because he's just got a he's got a natural gravitas and a humanity. But there's a, there's a there's a the, he's got a humour and he's therefore wicked. there's a cheekiness <laughs> in everything. But but he's also this incredibly like grounded powerhouse actor so you just get you get to play everything when he was wicked so I'd like Succession I just think is fantastic like the dialogue is just unbelievable what about uh, Breaking Bad alright what about Sopranos Sopranos yeah definitely you've never seen Breaking Bad I've never seen Breaking Bad that means you've got the whole of Breaking Bad I don't know thank you that's a very positive way of looking at it four years after it came out I thought well this isn't going to work oh my god it's awesome is it it's awesome everyone says this I'm slightly terrified of it not living up to the no it will don't worry about it it will alright okay I'll give it a go Sopranos yeah man Jesus I'm doing I'm doing a show at the moment which is the uh Directed by uh, Tim Van Patten, who directed uh, uh, most of the Sopranos, like the first. What? I mean, he's ju- he's just amazing. So what, to, what shows that you do? It's a, it's a, oh, I'm definitely NDA on some level. It's a, I thought you I thought you might be. I thought you slipped into an NDA I have issue de- there. No, no, no. no so so far I'm fine, Chris. But but can I continue on this line of question? Um, it is a show, and it's an Apple show. Uh, with uh, <laughs> you've been so fluent up until this point <laughs> uh, I could tell you who's in it I, I think I, 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 tell you, I basically work with Danny Mays a lot and let's leave it at that and Danny, I love Danny Mays Danny's wicked yeah. one of my favourites Danny Mays yeah he's one of my favourites what about Game of Thrones House of the Dragon have you had any conversations about what, what, no did you? he's raising his eyebrow there about, about being think, in it yeah because like, I feel like lots most British actors mm. either have been in it or have been asked to be in it <laughs> hang on a minute he, just so you know he raised his eyebrow he shifted in his chair uncomfortably yeah. and he looked at, down at the ground <laughs> twice now I'm no expert in body language. Actually, I am. I do it for, I've interviewed people for a living. Would you I, like no, to be in a white no, blonde no, wig? He's clearly in it. <laughs> he's clearly in the whole of the next season. I'm not in it. Um, I would like. Uh, I, I would like to be in a white blonde wig. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be fun. Yeah, Tom, you're awesome, man. Nice one. You're awesome. Nice one. 